Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are talking about potassium. So if you're new to this, this is the 17 day countdown to Christmas, what we like to call plant myth, where we go through all 17 essential plant nutrients, how they're uptaken and what they do for the plant. So potassium is one of my absolute favorite primary macronutrients out there. And that is because it is probably the number one nutrient you want to add if you have recently transplanted a plant or you're working on establishing a perennial in a garden, that sort of thing, because it is essential for some really key mechanisms within the plant itself. So potassium is able to regulate both the turgor pressure, so the pressure that is in the vascular uh, organ within each plant cell that holds water or decreases water based on the world around it. And this is e important because when we have extreme wilting in our plant, I did a whole video on this. I mean, it's an old video, so it's not very well filmed from before, but it, all the content's there, the information is there. And in that, I discussed the fact that you've harmed your turgor pressure or you've changed your turgor pressure through root damage. So the best way to reverse this or to change this or to reverse wilting in general is to use a potassium fertilizer. Now providing this in a slight excess in times of transplant or in times of extreme stress or heat is never a bad idea because again, it's going to help keep those bundles inside the cell full. And when those bundles are full of water, we end up with a nice firm leaf. It's when we aren't able to regulate that based on the environment around it, whether that be from stress, heat, or whatever the case is, then we end up with a wilted or a drought type looking plant. This will also be the case if you forget to water a plant, you will want to add a potassium fertilizer or a fertilizer with high rates of potassium in it because it will help that plant bounce back in a timely fashion. So plants with a potassium deficiency do show signs of potassium deficiency, but one of the less clear signs that you may realize is they have an increased or kind of a spastic reaction to different stressors, whether that be pest, disease, um, changes in lighting, temperature, that sort of thing. If you're noticing your plant is excessively sensitive, especially compared to other plants you may have in your home of the same family, it may be a potassium deficiency. Think of this as the way the plant is able to uh, regulate itself. So if us ourselves don't exercise and eat healthy on a regular basis, we may end up more sensitive to insults from other people. So maybe if I don't eat, you know, my, or don't take my multivitamin every day, or I'm not continually working to strive for the best intake in my body, and I get a nasty comment on YouTube, I may be, you know, upset by that. However, if I had my potassium, I'd be able to regulate and deal with that in a more normalized fashion. So this is a mass flow uptake molecule. That means, again, this is the straw mechanism. This is a part of the smoothie and it is taken up regardless of, you know, it's taken up so long as there's water present in the soil. So if you underwater your plants or you're not watering on a regular basis and keeping that soil moisture at an adequate level, then you'll end up with obviously potassium issues. Now, keep in mind, it is very mobile in the plant. That means it, the deficiencies are gonna show up in the lower portions of the plant, not the newer portions of the plant. We've discussed this at large in you know, all the videos previous to this. But regardless of all that, you one thing to keep in mind is that potassium is not very mobile in the soil so that means if potassium is present in the soil it kind of has to be localized to the area of the plant if it's out of reach of the roots um, it can be moved into the root zone if it's coming from above and moving below but it's going to take time it's going to take a long time for it to leach down that's why things like you know top dressing and stuff needs to be done on a regular basis, so we're always moving that nutrient through the system. Now, if the potassium is below the roots grab, unfortunately, it's not going to move up. Like I said, it's not mobile. It's not very mobile in the soil system in general. So it kind of needs to be root placed to a point um, 
other than you know gravitational forces over time doing their job. Of course, there's microbes and exudates that can be released into the soil that will decompose and help cycle that potassium, but for the most part, you do want it to be placed seed by the seed or by the root in general. So one of my favorite ways to actually transplant a plant, like I said, is with that potassium fertilizer. So what you want to do is you want to water that plant preferably bottom water that plant with a potassium heavy fertilizer. So something that has the last number at the highest. Um, of course, the other numbers are gonna be higher and typically your nitrogen is always gonna be higher than your phosphorus or your potassium. But when possible, try to get that potassium nice and high. I'll leave a link down below for some great fertilizers that do have really high potassium in them. But ultimately, I like to put them in a tray or in a catch basin that obviously doesn't have drainage holes and then mix my fertilizer and then let my plants sit in there as I'm starting to prep for the process of actually watering them. So that could be, you know, an hour or two you'd want to leave them in. This is both indoor and outdoor plants. So once that is soaked up enough of that potassium fertilizer, then I will transplant in the soil. I don't find it as effective if I water the plant after, like obviously you're gonna wanna water the plant after to a point, but I don't find using a potassium fertilizer after the point is as effective, especially if you're potting up into a raised bed, a ground soil, or a larger container for that matter, only because the roots obviously aren't in that space and so they're not going to capture that potassium it's out of reach and so putting it in those outer limits that the roots have not yet penetrated is ultimately kind of pointless to a point is just my feeling of it now keep in mind like if you're just potting up a little bit like you're going at half a container size of course just water normally with a potassium fertilizer because i'm assuming you're potting up because it's root bound or you know the roots are filling in too much and so you know it's not going to be much of a stretch for the plant to actually grab onto that potassium that's just on those outer soil areas but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below what you learned today of course go grab your planners Yes, 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 paperback or printable, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.